Okay, this is this is more for my personal. This is this is Jake's contribution to the to the Q and A list now. Three lug versus fixed mount. I get, okay. and then I see stuff like barrel spacers, and I'm like, I speak the language relatively well at this point, but like I understand what three lug goes on, but then I go well, like uh, fixed mount barrel spacer. Okay, now I'm out. I don't get it. A three lug can be done in a couple different ways. This three lug is what's a three lug even going on? What um, guns are going to have three lug? Pistol caliber carbines or submachine guns. Yep. So MP5s and yes. B&Ts and yes. shit like that. Or maybe someone adds this three lug to a Uzi or a Mac 10 or whatever. Yeah, but those are still in that same kind of sub gun yeah, category. Correct. Yeah. So three lugs generally come in a nine millimeter version. Uh huh. And there is a 45 version of it as well. Yep. But for the sake of this conversation, let's just say three lugs are only nine millimeter because that encompasses pretty much all of them except a few outliers there. I'm with it. Three lug is machined onto barrels by HK. And three lug can also have the thread, the snout threaded. Okay. And that would be a navy three lug. So it can take direct thread or three lug. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I heard that. Right? And it's got a little thread protector that has huh. the same OD. Oh. Huh. So those are, I mean, that's just, there's a few different takes of it. That's cool. But basically what you're going to do is put it in and then you're going to depress the spring and turn it and that spring will push it back out into some lugs. Three lug is never super tight. It's got a little bit of play in it. So which would... Um, it's not, not good for like precision. Right. Accuracy is going to drop a little... A, minusculely, sure. but three lug is awesome because it's super fast and easy. That's the main appeal <coughs> is speed. <clears throat> uh, so obviously, and this would still be uh, for mostly like sub guns, PCCs. Fixed barrel applications, right? Uh, give me a couple of examples. MP5. Okay. The barrel doesn't reciprocate. Right. Like on your handgun. Your handgun has a piston so that can can move back and forth. So when pressure builds up in the silencer, mm -hmm. the piston pushes out and helps to push the, unlock the barrel, link it down and push the slide back. Okay, so why would you, why, why would, uh, well, I guess it's... You can't fix mount a handgun right, with yeah, yeah, reciprocating yeah. barrel. Yeah, well, I'm going in a different direction, Sorry. which is why would you, um, why would someone do, my question is why would someone use a fixed mount over a three lug, but I guess it's really a matter of, well, what's your barrel set up for? And preference. Got it. But I mean, if your barrel came, like, you know, if you got a HK or something that came with three lug, well, you you have your mounting option now. Obviously, you're mm -hmm. getting a three lug adapter, but if your barrel did, was not set up for a three lug, but it just had threads on it, but it was a fixed barrel gun with threads, now we're getting a fixed mount. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying There's to no wrong way, but you could also then thread a three lug onto it and three lug. Mm hmm. You, and get, then what, you get to pick. And what's the barrel spacer? What the hell is that thing? A barrel spacer. Is that a thing? I feel like I saw that. There, you're, you mean fixed barrel spacer? I believe so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so they'll usually call it like an FBS. Okay. That goes in lieu of the spring to make this piston into a fixed mount. So if I was, if this was my uh, mount that's on the end of that can, I also need that fixed barrel spacer. No. No, okay. No. The fixed barrel spacer only replaces the spring. The uh, little spring we took off on the piston. I'd God. set the spring down, put a fixed barrel spacer, and put the cap back on. Then this piston wouldn't be a piston anymore. It would turn it into a fixed mount. Uh, okay. So I could take this off. So this exact platform, instead of having that spring, yes. you could run exact that fixed barrel spacer. Exact thing, but spring replaced with fixed barrel spacer. Then on to say like a Colt nine millimeter. Mm -hmm. 
that you don't want the can flopping around on the end with the piston. So is that the main reason you don't yes. want that? Uh, you don't want that. Play? Well, you only want the piston to function. Yeah. When the barrel needs to link down and the barrel reciprocates a little bit, has a little bit of movement to it. Okay. Otherwise, you're going to use a fixed mount on a fixed or fixed barrel space or on a fixed barrel. Well, most people who are shooting pistols, they're going to run, you know, this piston spring yeah. setup. You know, that, that's going to be... But this pistol can can also do crossover duty on pistol caliber carbine. Right. So that's one advantage of something like the Ghost yes. is that I could, uh, I could have that as a PCC gun. Correct. For an MP5, I could three lug this mm -hmm. or... I could fixed mount it or mm -hmm. I could fixed barrel space it and then get it onto a fixed barrel spacer or fixed so, barrel firearm. Well, see, and that's why, it, and by the way, you've changed your answer on your number one rifle and pistol suppressor because when I asked you that, I bought the two things you told me to buy. So how dare but you change your answer? that wasn't for you. That was for me. Oh, well, I'm talking about mainstream America here, okay? Mainstream America is like this, not like that. No, I get it. Look, mainstream America looks like this and this. These will far and above outsell. Either of those will sure. do more than a Wolverine. Sure. Well, because that's what America It's shoots. more popular. Yeah. But that's a big part of why I like that ghost so much is because, look, I can run it on all my pistols, but if I didn't have a dedicated sub-gun can in time, I'd just run play. that. Still in play. I'd just run that. Yes. You know? Can you run that on 300 Blackout or no? Absolutely. If it's okay. subsonic, not right. super. Subs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Subs, yes. Yeah. That but, I mean, actually that's, sounds good on 300 Black. That's, that's versatility. I like versatility. I do, too. I'm a versatility fan. I endorse it. Giant fan of versatility. I live by it. I'm known for it. I wouldn't say I'm known for it, but I enjoy it. Yeah. Versatile as fuck. Okay, well, that was a good conclusion to that one. So we'll go ahead and keep keep the keep the party moving forward here. Okay, so we got rifles, suppressor, we got uh, we got pistol, we got three left fixed man. Uh, we got that. One. Okay. Now this is one of personal interest to me too. Okay, I, actually, most of these questions are probably my questions. Okay, I'm making it sound like these are America's questions. Most of them are mine. Okay. Things so, you want to know. My next, and we're probably going to need a couple cans to fuck around with here. I mean, mess around with here, uh, is best suppressors for short barrel rifles versus full length, uh, you know, like 14.5 or shoot. I mean, you could even go to 20s. Most people are going to have, you know, either like 16 inch or, you know, 10, 11, 5, somewhere in that range. Okay. Because this, as an 11.5, with the Sandman S on it, sounds quite nice. And right now I'm kicking around, okay, next rifle can, if I had like a Sandman K, is that gonna be tough on an SBR? Or like, you know, where, where, where are we gonna fall here? Do you wanna talk the difference between, do you wanna talk L, S, and K? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because I all of a sudden want to do that too. Yeah, I do. Can I get those out? Get them. I'm going to do that thing where I move again. Do it. Did you take any like competitive dance back in the day? Because you moved like you, you know. I haven't competitively danced. But danced. Or really danced. <laughs> so I'd say probably no. Yeah, well. You might hit like an okay. end of life crisis where you decide to pick it up. I doubt that, yeah. but maybe. You know I mean, I, mean? I don't know. I'm not. I'm never say never. I've learned that. We don't know. I've been wrong a lot in my life. Okay. 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 So, S or K, S and L. Mm -hmm. Can I break that code for you? I know since we're break long, short, and Kurtz. Is that what the K is for? Yeah. Kurt. Or Kurtz, depending on how you want to translate it. It's the same half a dozen of one six the other. Yes. Cool. Kurtz, I would think it'd be the proper way. We borrowed that from our German friends because we thought it was a cute way of saying short. I'm with it. So this is um, for a civilian. I would call that a truck gun can. 
Okay. And for law enforcement, I would call it an entry can. Okay. It's probably never going to make anything super pleasurable to shoot over a long period of time. But to, if you're looking for smallest overall space, compact, that's way more enjoyable than nothing. Open muzzle. Yeah. Or flash height or brake or whatever. And it's comfortable to shoot. You just, it's like the sun. Look, you're not going to get a sunburn in 10 minutes, but if you're going to be out all day long, you're going to do it a little different. So otherwise the sun will hurt you kind mm -hmm. of expose your time. Right. And, and that on an SBR versus a full length gun, even that's going to make a pretty big difference. I'm thinking it's going to make a huge difference. It's the difference in uncomfortably loud or just plain ringing and pain. Right. So an S is a very good sounding suppressor. An S is most generally, now there's always going to be some, you know, outliers or differences in this. This does its best work on a semi-auto platform. This does its best work on a bolt gun. So I would let those be the driving factor rather than the sound. In other words, if I put this L on this rifle instead of that S, it will be louder at the port and it will sound louder to the shooter. But an observer will say it's quieter now. Hang on, with the L on it? With an L on it. Would be louder for the shooter? The shooter? Really? Interesting. The microphone ad ear huh. will rise. Wow. And it will be louder. The microphone at muzzle will go down and it will be quieter. Wow, fascinating. So, and it's not like a, by a like, landslide yeah, or like anything. Yeah, like you'd have to measure it to... Look, you're starting to go the opposite way that you want to go, I believe. Too, too, too long. Well, it's, it holds a larger volume of gas. Mm -hmm. And when the action opens up, the gas... It's like blowing up a balloon. It has no direction. It'll go out the back of the barrel as easily as it will go out the front of the barrel. Mm. When you have this reservoir charged with gas pressure, it dumps out both ends, right? So the bigger this reservoir, the more gas is going to come out and the louder it's going to be at shooter ear. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like to let that kind of drive that decision on a bolt gun it's closed so there's is no port noise ever. sure it can so really i mean the people buying l's are your precision your precision crowd yeah yeah it's a it's a bolt gun thing and that's the semi-auto or auto i mean you can well and for, and for your all purpose I mean, I mean like look if you're looking at sandman lineup and you're going okay for, for you for your all purpose like go to can it's got to be an s it is an S. I mean, it has to be. Yes. I mean, you know, it's like, I want a K, but I don't really want to run a K on that. I want a K for... So, I'll slap that K on, on this bad boy. That's what I want a K for. Okay. Is for a full-length gun. Now, see, that works. That, for me, is just pure sex. That'll get what you want done. Right. Because I got a full-length gun, so it's going to... Versus that SBR, shorter can, so... Sound pretty good on that. Now, here's what, would be inter good. here's what would be interesting to know. Okay, so that shorty with an S on it, full-length gun with a K on it, which one do you think is more quiet? I'll bet they're strangely very comparable. Pretty close? Because that's even more cool. Because I go, great, I've got two different cans that check two different boxes, but I can get roughly the same amount of actual noise out of these. That's cool. Mm -hmm. S and K. The only way to really win there would be to take that S off of that SBR and put it on that 16-inch gun. Oh, it sounds great. Then you'd have some. Oh, it sounds fantastic at that point. Mm. But those two probably sound about the same. Very, very close. Yeah. God. Well, and, you know, obviously these guns become quite long as you start throwing cans on, on full-length guns. But that's not obnoxious. That's not an obnoxious length on, on that gun. Long, but... Worth it. I not like in it. Civil War standards, it's not. Well, no. You know, we've come I a mean, long way. Yeah. I like it. 
I like that a lot. What the hell was my question? I don't even remember what the hell I was asking you. Oh, SBR's full-length guns. I get it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm liking that. I'm liking that. K. I think K once, is for me. I, once you get your kind of center line, the majority, the most usable can, another guy with a differing of view may secondary be super excited about an L. Yeah, I don't he could shoot, still yeah. use it on those. But yeah. that could do a lot of work for a bolt gun guy. Yeah, I just don't shoot precision. So I'm not yeah. good enough to shoot. You're more aggressive. When you run hot, you run hot, you know? It's like you gotta stay in your lane. <laughs> <clears throat> um, okay, got that. Okay. Um, this is a question from someone else. I don't remember who it was. So, dude, granted, it was, it's was. it got to be a dude. No female submit questions. Um, but some dude wrote, uh, lifespan of a can and how often do I need to clean my cans? Okay, rimfire can needs to be able to come apart and will need to be cleaned on some kind of a interval, you know, few hundred rounds I'd say several thousand rounds oh okay easy not like every minute but whether your rimfire ammunition is plated or lubed lead it will still build up lead in other words CCI mini mags will fill it up with lead they're not jacketed they're plated okay, okay. so took me a second but I if you're up. gonna shoot rimfire you want to be able to clean it the same kind of loosely applies with center fire handgun. It's a good idea to be able to clean it and you can get some build up and you run more leaded ammo here and there. So if you do that, you for sure want to clean it a little bit. It will get build up if you do that. So we're saying on uh, like something like my ghost, I should, I should attempt to maintain that. I'm not saying that. But if you shot some lubed lead, some bare lead, some cast bullets through it, you for sure need to clean that a but little bit. But if I'm bit. just shooting like, you know. Be you very know, infrequent standard. if ever. Maybe you never clean it and that probably be fine. It's kind of a either or. So when for your you do average. Center fire handgun. Yeah, I mean, for your average uh, going to the range, we're just, you know, running some, you know, reloads or what, you know, just like your standard ammunition. Pretty minimal in terms of how, how much uh, maintenance. And could be zero. This. Well, really, it, for me, it has been zero, and that's fine. Just keep with jacketed ammunition, and you can. Well, that's great. Keep that at zero. Well, okay, okay, and then so the second part of that. So that's in something like a Sandman. I mean, rifle. Now that your Sandman is completely welded. Right. So there's nothing. So to do. there is no maintenance that needs to be done, and when you start to get into the pressures of bottleneck rifle cartridges mm -hmm. they will over time and there's you know this could change but it will erode the metal in the baffle stack before any buildup gets in it in other words it'll erode itself away hmm. before it gets built up now that's not per se the case in straight wall handgun cartridges Okay. They will get a little bit. It would take forever to get build up with jacketed ammo, but at some point it would be nice to clean it. Sure. Rimfire needs to be cleaned, so I hope that. And something makes like some your sand mount. I mean, there's there's really no way to clean it. There is there no. There's a way. If it for some reason if you clogged it up, you'd call me. Sure. I'd weld a new core up and. Put a new core in it. Hell yeah. Then that goes for wearing it out. I've never, to date, we haven't replaced a Sandman core that I can think of because it was worn out. So give me a sense for, okay, if we said uh, life expectancy, I mean, I guess it's going to depend on the can. So say something like a Sandman, right? Because, I mean, Sandman would be the most popular rifle lineup for you guys, right? Oh, absolutely. Right. So, like, on your Sandman can, uh, take a educated guess, lifespan of that thing. I mean, it's got to be heavy. Now, your 
question's going to be difficult to answer, but I'll give you a guess. But let's say... Or like the most rounds you've let's seen say, go through these. And no one ever really documents it and then adds it all up. Let's say 30, 40, 50,000 rounds. I don't know. Tens of thousands, though. Yes. Now, when you're talking about baffle erosion, if you shot one round every five seconds, like it's just never going to get hot enough to get the metal hmm. soft enough to any degree to erode. But if you did mag dump after mag Full dump auto. and the can was like glowing, then yes, it's going to start to erode fairly quickly. And most people just aren't doing that. Unless, no. you know, it's some sort of like range demo full auto gun or and something. I, I mean, you could melt one down. It will only, it gets hot and it will only take so much heat. I, if I made a mile long belt and just forced it through a belt fed, like it's only going to go so far. Sure. But yeah, for your average, um, I'd, you know, range user or something like a same man, you're probably never even really going to kill it. No, I would say the average guy, it's indefinite. You just, if you've got the money to buy that much ammo and take that much, you know, effort to put that ammo through, you probably have better things to do with your time. When you probably have a few cans. And if you've got the time, you probably can't afford to, that'd cost a lot. That ain't cheap. No. That ain't cheap. No, I just don't think people do that. I yeah. I've never seen it. Um, okay. Good. Good, clean, smooth. Moving on. That one was uh, from a, a fan. I actually do remember who wrote that. 